What's up? Hey, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the Olympics. The 2020-21 Tokyo Olympics have had a lot of drama, but one area that is not up for debate is that Emma Coburn is great. Emma Coburn becomes the world champion. Emma Coburn wins. Biggest shocks in women's distance running for years. In case you were not aware, Emma is an American middle distance runner who specializes in the 3000 meter steeplechase, three time Olympian currently in Tokyo. And as you'll hopefully see by the end of this video is a great athlete with a great attitude toward diet and training. I first came across her a few years back when I was getting back into running. I did not know how track worked. I didn't know that steeplechase was a thing. I honestly didn't know that there were running events beyond just sprinting and running a full on marathon. I knew nothing. So if you're in the same boat as me, yes, there are many events, many distances that are run as part of track and steeplechase is a yee-haw time. Basically, someone decided it's not enough to race around a track. We need another obstacle or four, but wait, there's more water. So I figured I'm an average runner. How hard could it be to keep up with an Olympic athlete? Which is why I'm so excited to announce we're going to Tokyo, baby. We're not going to Tokyo. That is a joke. We're not, we're not doing that. But I did research Emma's diet and training routine. And so for the next 48 hours, we are going to be living life like Emma. Before I get into it, I want to say a huge thank you to Element for partnering with me on today's video. Element is a science-backed electrolyte blend that contains all the minerals you need without any of the sugar, sweeteners, or ingredients you don't. We are going to be doing a lot of running, a lot of sweating, a lot of drinking in this video. So to help keep us hydrated, Element has got an insane offer for our community where they will send you samples of all their flavors for free. All you cover is the shipping. So I'll put a link for that in the description box down below. Otherwise, on with the video. Breakfast time. It is just after 7 a.m. I have been trying to figure out what to do. I'm not used to having two drinks for my breakfast. So I've been like moving these around, trying to rearrange my setup. I'm very excited to dig into this though, because based on every video and article I've seen about Emma, she seems to have a very routine morning routine. She does pretty much the same thing every morning. So she has a slice of toast with peanut butter and honey, which I am so excited for. This was one of my go-to childhood snacks. I'd sometimes sprinkle brown sugar on top. Comment down below if you ever did that. So good. And then she also has a cup of black coffee, which I've not done black coffee in a little bit. It sometimes upsets my stomach, isn't the best before a workout. So I'll do my best to finish this. We'll see how far we get. As well as she has a big cup of water with electrolyte. And I actually love that she does this because there's all sorts of hydration strategies you can follow, like hydration goals for how much water you drink, et cetera, et cetera. I like preloading electrolytes because you are anticipating your needs. You know, I know I'm gonna be sweaty. I know this is gonna be high intensity. And so rather than waiting for that drop off in performance, or to feel like I'm getting a muscle cramp and then react to that by starting to hydrate and then have that delay in performance for it to come back. By preloading your electrolytes, you should be able to avoid getting those muscle cramps or feeling that drop off in performance due to dehydration. So today I'm having the Element Orange Salt Flavor. I've been using Element for the past few months, um, pretty much all my summer workouts of running, sweating, like doing workouts outside love all of their flavors, love that they include a science-backed blend of electrolytes. They have sodium, potassium, and magnesium. Sodium and potassium are great if you are a salty sweater, if you often find like little white marks on your clothing, or you get that gritty feeling on your skin after a sweaty workout, chances are you're losing a lot of minerals. You should be replenishing your sodium and potassium. And magnesium is great because it can help avoid or reduce the severity of muscle cramping. So if you want to check out Element for yourself, I'll put a link in the description box down below. They have done an insane offer for our community. I love them so much for this, where they will send you a sample pack of all of their flavors for free. All you gotta do is cover the shipping. So I will put a link to that in the description box down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna dig into this. I'm going to eat my toast, get this fueling going, and I will check in with you when it's time for our workout. What is up? Welcome to the track. It is just after 9 a.m. I was a little bit nervous on the drive over here because I realized 
I don't normally train at a track. When you go to the track, there could be other people at the track, but there are no people, so we'll be distraction free. But based on what I could find about Emma's training routine, this girl, she is a consistency queen. All right, of course it varies throughout the season as she gets closer to competition, but in general, she's hitting 80 miles of running per week. Now, in order to spread out that many miles, yes, you can expect to be running every day. Emma runs every single day, but throughout the week, they intersperse harder and easier workout sessions doing three workout days per week. So those are like the harder days, but on the days between workout days, it's like easier runs. She's not really pushing the intensity that much. So I figured for this video, we would do a workout day first. The morning workout that we've got right now, the morning run at 9 a.m. Sometimes she does it on the track, sometimes she does it on the trails. In general, it's about 12 miles and it's a combination of like warm up at an easy intensity, do some repeats, do some intervals, push the intensity, then do a cool down. All right, like that, I believe we are ready to get started with our workout. So I have got my fanny pack on, earbuds in, 12 miles. Let's get it. I found gummy worms in my fanny pack. So we're having a little bit of big fun fuel. Nice. We made it through that absolutely brutal workout. No, I'm not crying. It's just sweat. My eyes are red because all of the sweat and sunscreen has now made it into my eyes. I'm like blinking so much trying to get out. It's doing nothing, but I am so tired. I didn't take as many breaks as I thought I would need to, but I can say my legs are dead. My literal hips are tired. I'm definitely gonna have shin splints tomorrow, but something I read in pretty much every interview with Emma is that she prioritizes protein. Guys, I'm sorry. My eyes are just having a moment. So she always packs a protein shake for after practice, after her workouts. Today I'm having the women's best vegan protein in vanilla. I normally bake with this because I just find it makes for like a better texture, better consistency. I'm gonna drink this. Then we're gonna head home for round two of this workout because of course there's a round two. Workout time. So on workout days, Emma does her 9 a.m. run then goes straight from that into an hour of weights. Now, when I first read that, I was terrified. How in the heck? But as I continue to dig, I found this video and it looks like Emma's weight sessions include a combination of flexibility, mobility, and weight training. The format I found online has her doing a 20 minute warm up, including flexibility and mobility, 30 minutes of weights, then a 10 minute cool down with more mobility. I planned today's workout around this and included exercises I've seen her do before. Most of her weight work revolves around core, hips, glutes, and legs, as these are most often used with running, and includes a combination of heavier and lighter weight exercises. I couldn't quite figure out the rep set and rest schemes, but it looks like she does a lot of supersets and circuit work, pairing heavier exercises with faster, more explosive moves. Hi. Hello. Can you help me? With what? Brunch. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Jeff has come downstairs for moral support as we prepare brunch. Emma's go-to brunch order, it seems like she does brunch every day of the week, workout day or not workout day, after her morning 9 a.m. thing, you know, whether it's a run or a workout run, whatever. Her go-to order though for brunch is two eggs, French toast, as well as breakfast sausage. She loves breakfast. She says she could eat breakfast three times a day. I feel that, I get that. I would love if I didn't have to make this right now, but I mean, I feel like the end result's gonna be good, so let's just get into it. Can you tell I've been snacking on blueberries? Anyways, this looks delicious, so I'm gonna dig in. We're gonna get some eats. Then I think very soon in this routine, we will get to sleep. What is up? I just got out of the shower and it is finally the time that we have all been waiting for. I have at least been waiting for nap time. I am so grateful that Emma includes a mid-afternoon nap in her routine on workout days because I really didn't think I'd need it when I was looking at the schedule, but I am feeling beat 
up. I feel like in the past hour, I've gone through every emotion from feeling nauseous after the workout to then ravenously hungry to then too tired to move. Getting in the shower was a serious struggle. I just like, I didn't want to be in there. So now we're laying down. Emma doesn't say how long she naps for. I'm going to guess it's like an hour to hour and a half. I don't really know. I'm going to set a few alarms, go by feel on this one. And then I guess by the time I wake up, it'll probably be close to dinner time. So fun story. I just woke up. I guess today we tried a little intuitive napping because I ignored every alarm I set. Like I don't even think my body registered that my alarms were going off. I did set them for PM, not AM. So not really sure what happened there. I napped for about two and a half hours. To be honest, I'd still love to be in bed, but we had to get out. We had to make the dinner. For dinner, Emma's go-to or one of her go-tos is pasta bolognese. The recipe she makes looks absolutely amazing. I decided I'd jazz it up a little bit. I thought, I really thought when we went to the grocery store, I thought we were just going to go kind of standard on the pasta, but we worked so hard today. I figured we deserve to treat ourselves. So there's this pasta I have been eyeing for so long. It's a little bit pricey. It's a little bit bougie, but it's called Fiorelli. And Jeff and I have been watching The Sopranos lately. He decided that this reminded him of Furio, who I just, I love him. Why not? Don't comment any spoilers. We're not that far into this show. So I'm going to make up some pasta bolognese. Emma also has a snack while she's making dinner, which I can definitely get on board with that. She seems to be really into yogurt. She also likes like raw veggies and hummus. I bought, I'm going to show you in a sec. I bought this yogurt that looks great. So I think I'm going to snack on that, nibble on that a little bit while we make our recipe. Then we're going to eat. Then we're going to go back to sleep. What is up? Welcome to day two of training and eating like Emma. We are crushing it. I actually saw with when I'm filming this right now that she made the Olympic finals for a steeplechase, which, you know, we knew she was going to, right? We really knew going in that she was going to make it, but that was still a little win, especially a little boost after feeling so beat up after yesterday's workouts. Like I literally woke up this morning, even though I had that nap last night, which thank goodness I did. I was just feeling generally fatigued. Like when I went to move my legs, step out of bed, my bones felt heavy so if I were training for me I would probably take a rest day today but because we are trying we are striving to be like Emma we are going to continue full steam ahead from what I've read about her training routine she does like we said yesterday three workouts per week those are her higher effort her higher intensity days hence the absolutely insane routine yesterday but on the days in between to make sure she's hitting those 80 miles of running per week, she does do recovery or a lower effort run. So on the schedule today, we're going to have an eight mile easy run this morning as our morning activity. And then this afternoon or evening, we're going to be doing a four mile run. Work at a time. We are ready. We are excited. We are stoked. We are trying to bring the energy up because my body is not feeling this eight miles easy, which let's be honest, it's not going to be easy no matter how slow I run it. I just, I really need more recovery, but we're going to get this done. Like that. 
that we are back from today's run. It did not exactly go according to plan. Basically what happened was I started the run with mild shin splints, but I thought, you know what? We'll warm up, we'll ease into this, maybe they'll go away. They didn't go away. Come mile to 80, shooting throbbing pain up the insides of both my shins. Now I've been here before. I know what this means. It means I need more recovery. My body is angry at me. So I made the decision to call the run at three and a half miles. Now had I really wanted to, I could have done the full eight miles. We definitely could have gotten it done. But a lesson I've learned the hard way with running is that just because you can, it doesn't mean you should. And if we truly want to train like Emma, train like an Olympic level elite athlete, we have to be able to show up consistently and not get an injury. Working smarter, not harder, something we talk about all the time on this channel. So I called the run at three and a half miles, but that doesn't mean I'm giving up on getting my eight miles of easy effort, aerobic based building activity done. A little trick I've learned on my own running journey as I've been gradually easing up mileage for me is that when you're struggling with shin splints or you're just feeling a little bit beaten up, you can swap some of those easier effort miles for a lower impact activity. Some people do swimming, biking, elliptical. There's all sorts of stuff you can do. Personally, I like the spin bike. I have a spin bike at home. One mile of running does not exactly equal one mile on the bike as one mile on the bike is arguably easier. So a rough rule of thumb that I use is that one mile of easy running is about equal to 10 minutes of easy biking. So we have four and a half miles left for this morning run. I'm gonna do 45 minutes on the bike. Then we'll reevaluate for the second run of the day. mixing up a little post-workout protein shake because Emma says protein is a priority. Every day she aims for 100 to 120 grams of protein. So that's not just like the weight of a high protein food, it's the actual content of protein in the food in case you don't track macros and you're like, what the heck, grams of protein? So anyways, I am going to mix up a protein shake, which by the way, if you think protein shakes are disgusting, allow me to put you on this. Almond milk, have you met? Mixing your protein shakes with water is nasty. I don't know how I went so many years doing this. It tastes like the wateriest version of skim milk with like just a hint of flavor but when you add almond milk it turns your protein shakes into like a creamy and delicious journey so I am going to pour some almond milk into our cup here. Very careful, I've been spill prone lately. We add the protein lately. Oh, I've got powder all over my hand. Lately, I have been using this Women's Best Vegan Protein in, this is, this is the coconut flavor today. I like the vanilla, but I also really like the coconut. It's a really mild coconut, and I'm just kind of obsessed with coconut as a flavor. So I'm mixing this in. I do usually use the Vegan Protein for baking, so I just find it leads to like a better consistency, not all like spongy, like when you use whey protein. But I've also found that it mixes really well I don't know how that got in there. Anyways, gonna finish sipping on this, then on with our routine. Like that, we are back with another snack. I put together a little veggie platter for us. So on here, we've got some deli turkey, cherry tomatoes, baby carrots, cucumbers, snap peas, and something special if you're at the grocery store, spicy hummus, because why would you get regular hummus when spicy hummus is an option? On non-workout days, Emma says that she usually has a light snack between her morning and nighttime runs. It'll be yogurt, some fruit, or a little veggie platter with some deli meat. Now, I feel like we've already had a lot of yogurt in this video. I like yogurt, you know, but I wanna mix it up. So I put together this little veggie platter for us, but I figured now would be a good time to like check in on how the diet, how this whole eating side of things is actually going. So I will say, when I was researching this video, it felt like a lot of food. It felt like a lot of food that I wouldn't normally eat. For example, I never eat this much bread. It's not because I'm like afraid of bread or I avoid bread. I just, I don't know, it's not really part of my routine. So I was kind of wondering how I would feel eating this many simple carbs, eating this much sugar, if I would feel more energetic, less energetic, like what the situation would be. So what I can tell you is my body has been burning through this food. I have not been bloated. I have not felt under fueled, over fueled. You know, yes, I've been fatigued, but that's more so because of my body not being used to this level of activity. From a food standpoint, I have felt very, very good. I've enjoyed every meal I've eaten so far. It's a great diet. Like I could eat this every day. Something Emma mentions in all of her interviews is that she doesn't track calories. She doesn't follow any rules around food. There's no foods off limits. You know, her diet doesn't change much throughout the year. Like this is truly a lifestyle for her. But something she builds upon with that is, you know, like running is her job, right? 
Her job is to perform well with running and she cannot perform well if she is not eating well. So she emphasizes, you know, eating is just as much my job as running is. I have to make sure I'm eating enough. You know, I got to finish my plate. I got to make sure I'm getting enough calories. I can't be lollygagging around trying to cut foods or cut calories out. So I really like that she emphasizes that. And it does seem like, like on workout days, all she has time for, and I felt this yesterday, is eating and running. And even with that, like I just felt so tired after the workouts yesterday, I didn't even wanna make brunch. Like it was hard to actually have the energy to eat at that level of activity. So that is interesting. Something else I noticed literally just because I was preparing this veggie platter is that there are not a lot of vegetables in this diet, at least from what we've done so far. Like. Yesterday, did we eat a vegetable? I put veggies in the bolognese sauce, but it wasn't like a lot of veggies. And it's like when you see a professional athlete like Emma, someone who's very lean, someone who's very fit, you just assume, or at least I'd assume, that they're pounding back salads all day. They're like the definition of clean eating and health, whatever the heck that means these days. But that's not the reality. Not every body is going to have these same needs. And like body, in terms of like your body and what you are putting it through on the daily, a serious consideration for endurance athletes, mainly running, Runners or anybody who's training at a high intensity for extended or repeated periods throughout the day is that your food has to be digested by the time you train. If you are putting away a lot of raw veggies in the form of a salad, if you're eating a lot of high fiber foods that are typically associated with health, those things do not digest quickly. And if they're still in your system when you go to start training, you're gonna have gas, you're gonna have bloating, you're gonna have cramps, you're not gonna feel your best. This is why I'm guessing she typically puts her veggies you know, in snack form between her two runs so that there's actually enough time for them to digest or she incorporates them into her dinner. We didn't do it last night and we're not gonna do it tonight, but another go-to dinner of hers is like a big chicken salad, something like that. She eats vegetables, but she eats them in a way that makes sense for her, her body, her goals, her needs. Really just goes back to, you gotta eat in a way that works for you. Like that, it is dinner time. We are showered, we are tired, we are sore, we are hungry. I'm I'm probably gonna finish this tub of yogurt before we even start prepping dinner. It's the same tub of yogurt that I was snacking on before dinner last night. As Emma says, she often snacks on yogurt while she's making dinner. There's not a ton left, so I might have to have a little something else. But I figured since this is our last night following Emma's diet and training routine, we would mix up dinner. We try something else. It seems like that spaghetti bolognese is one of her go-tos, like one of her favorite meals to have after training. But I wanted to get an accurate representation of how Emma eats on the regular. So I learned that she had a cookbook, which was awesome because I figured what better way to get an idea of the food she likes, the food she eats, how her diet changes throughout the season than to get her cookbook. So I got the digital version on Amazon. It also comes in paperback. I'm not sure about hardcover, but if you want to check it out, I'll put a link to it down below. Not gonna lie, Jeff and I got a little overwhelmed going through the cookbook because literally every recipe looks great, but we settled on grown up grilled cheese because we bought this massive loaf of bread for this video. I don't normally buy like a ton of bread at once. So we'll just kind of go to the bakery for making sandwiches on the weekend. But this was the only thing that was like a normal loaf of bread. I don't really know. I don't buy bread that often, but we bought this because we've been having so much toast with the pre-run meal and the brunch meal. So we figured we should use up the loaf of bread. is it for 48 hours of living life like Emma. I am exhausted. I need at least one full rest day, probably more. But before we wrap for today's video, I did want to have a little chat 
when I first came across Emma a few years back, the main draw for me was that she was lean. Just being honest, Emma's got an insane body. At the time, I was struggling with my weight. I'd gained a lot of weight in not a lot of time, so I followed a bunch of runners because the math in my calorie-deprived brain was runner lean. I should copy her routine. This completely ignores the fact that athletes like Emma truly eat or trying to fuel their bodies. They're not cutting calories, but that's beside the point. Copying an Olympic athlete's routine is extreme, but playing devil's advocate, why shouldn't you copy another runner's routine? even an amateur runner. Well, for the same reason you wouldn't copy a gymnast or weightlifter's routine. Running is deceiving because it's something that in theory we can all do naturally. Whereas when you look at something like a crazy flip, the warning bells in your brain stop you before you even start trying. The perception is different. I think one of the biggest misconceptions about running and endurance-based activities on the whole is that it comes down to willpower. If you can endure mentally, you will perform physically. And this isn't to say that mental toughness isn't an important part of any sport, but in reality with running, it's not that easy. Any sport involves a combination of skill and fitness. Running is no exception. Getting that stride down is a trained skill. Problem is, it's hard to see. With endurance athletes, many of the adaptations that occur are invisible. They're happening inside the body. And just because we can't see them doesn't mean that they're not happening, right? Elite athletes are going to have a higher stroke volume, for example. That means their heart is actually getting stronger so that every time it pumps, it's pumping more blood so it can get more oxygen to your muscles. There's an increase in mitochondrial density. Mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Do we remember high school bio, right? Having more mitochondrial density is going to allow your muscles to produce more energy. This thereby allowing you to maintain a higher output of activity for an extended period of time. Very important for endurance sport. The inside does not always reflect the outside and vice versa. It is a real shame that so much of endurance-based activity in the fitness space has been reduced to being just about burning calories or assuming that you're just doing it as a temporary thing to get lean or lose weight. There is so much more to these sports than that. I did not start loving running, but I have learned to love running. Of course, I did it from the standpoint point of just trying to burn calories but along the way I have learned so much about my body and I felt so empowered in my body feeling these changes actually occurring. If I have to end on one thing Know that running is about more than burning calories. If you do running just to burn calories and you assume that you can just run infinitely more because you're so motivated and it's gonna burn a ton of calories, to be honest, you're probably gonna get an injury and you're only gonna feel more discouraged in your body. Whereas if you learn to love running or whatever activity feels good for your body, it is going to become so much easier to burn those calories, to get lean or to show up consistently, like whatever your goal is for your body. But enjoyment is key. That's it for my rant, that's it for this video. I had so much fun making this. I know I really suffered. Like there were moments of suffering where I really didn't want to film anymore, but looking back on it, I did really enjoy making this video. And in learning more about Emma, I have even more admiration for her. Emma is an incredible athlete with an incredible attitude who, in spite of all her success, has stayed grounded and promotes what I believe is a very balanced approach. Like I'll slow down on the fangirling, okay? But if there's another athlete's routine or another person's routine that you find interesting that you'd like me to recreate, I'm open to suggestions. You know, try to keep it realistic. Don't try to kill me here, okay? But otherwise, thank you for watching. Let me know about that in the comment section down below and I can't wait to see you in the next video.